right? Let's look at other examples of goodness of uh, fit, other than the one that I have already posted, right? Uh, these are uh, extra question, right? That's uh, really true. <coughs> okay, All right? Okay, this questions um, related to geometric distribution. Okay, now at a talent spotting event for young um, football players, hundreds of them uh, take penalties until they score a goal. Now, data on number of attempts uh, required for a player to score are uh, given below. Right now, this um, this sounds like a geometric distribution. Now, in its uh, simplest um, concept, uh, geometric distribution is used to model uh, the number of failures before a success is being achieved. So, in this case, you can see that uh, the players uh, take penalties. The number of penalties before a goal is being uh, achieved. Right. So the following are the data collected. Okay. So the first row represent number of attempts. Uh, then a number of players uh, involved. Uh, now uh, when you see number of attempts is one, it, it means that um, they need to uh, attempt uh, one penalties. One penalties before a goal uh, can be. Uh, can be set right <clears throat> now it is thought that the distribution may be modeled by geometric distribution they have uh, told us that um, now the spreadsheet shows calculation for the test statistics and the p value right now i'm going to show you the uh, spreadsheet in a while or the worksheet now the extra question that i have uh, added into the original question is uh, carry out a test of five percent significant labor to determine whether the data can be modeled by uh, geometric distribution. Okay, so uh, as usual, we can start off by writing our um, hypothesis uh, statement here. So we can write down that as so our hypothesis statement would be okay. So here we will say that um, geometric. Um, distribution um, can uh, is is appropriate is a good fit for instance uh, for the sample that um, we have collected here, right? So the alternative hypothesis would um, would explain. Are otherwise, all right? Geometric distribution is not a good fit. Yep, it's not a good fit. Okay, there you have it. Uh, now we are very clear of our objective. Okay, okay. so next, uh, we will have to. Uh, sort of uh, get a, a bit of an idea of uh, what is a geometric uh, distribution. So just to recap, uh, x represent. Uh, let's assume that x represent number of uh, penalties uh, before they can score a goal. So therefore, we assume that this can be uh, modeled using uh, geometric distributions. And then these geometric distributions always have this uh, P as the probability of success. Q is a probability of uh, failure here. Now the um, the uh, probability mass function is actually given by this. Uh, just to recap here, so that is actually given by one minus P, which is probability of uh, failure, uh, x minus one, and then this is P here, where the x actually start from one. Uh, you can see that these are all the x, <coughs> 2, 3, and so on and so forth. Now, in our case, it's up to a 9 here. Right? I uh, hope that is uh, clear. Now, uh, do, are we given any information regarding the probability of success P? 
uh, no, we are not. Right? And then uh, other properties of geometric distribution is the mean. Okay, this is the one thing you need to remember. The mean for geometric distribution is given by one over uh, p here, whereby uh, the mean can be estimated from the sample that we have collected. So the mean can be estimated from the sample itself uh, by using this formula here. So we can uh, estimate the mean from this sample, the population mean of this geometric distribution from this uh, sample itself by carrying out this operation. So here I have already prepared the worksheet. You can see that all these numbers was copied from here. Uh, this is the observed frequency. Now we need to tablette these uh, numbers here. So we need to um, uh, get the sum, the sum of these uh, fx. So for that, uh, let's see what sum do we have here. Or do I have the sum here? Okay, so let me see whether I have the sum. I think I need to have the... Okay, hold on. Uh. Just let me get the view going first before I can see what am I having. Okay, so let's get the uh, sum of uh, fx here. Okay, now the sum of this would be, let me see what do we have, <clears throat> okay, so the sum is uh, 316, alright, 316 until C11, just to check, okay, so 316, so all we need to do is just um, key this one in, 316, and then divided by the total frequency here, you can see that there are um, 100 players. So if I were to total up the observed frequency, uh, for sure I'm going to get uh, 100 here. So just to check whether I'm actually getting uh, 100. Okay, uh, there, you s there you go. You can see that there's, a, there's 100 there, right? So therefore, this one will be divided by uh, 100. And then that will yield 3.16. Uh, as you can see, the mean is 3.16. But what we are interested in is to estimate. Yeah, our key uh, idea here is uh, this probability of success needs uh, need to be estimated. Right, need to be estimated uh, from here. So we can see that uh, p or probability of success is actually uh, the reciprocal of 3.16. Uh, one six there. All right. So let me see whether I have the value here. So if you take the reciprocal of three point one six, we should end up with zero point three two. Okay, that is just uh, to the two decimal places here. So you will get uh, three. Uh, sorry, you will get zero point three two. Okay, zero point three two there. Right. And then there you have it, there's a probability of success. Bear in mind, uh, this parameter uh, was uh, estimated. So later on, when we uh, calculate the degree of freedom, we have to subtract this off from the uh, number of category. All right, now I hope that is clear. This is the second uh, step here. So first step, we have uh, done that. Uh, second step. We have to find out a little bit information about geometric distribution and then identify if there's any parameters uh, missing. Okay, we have already found, uh, estimated the uh, parameter uh, parameters for the population. All right. <clears throat> so now we are ready. We are going to determine uh, the expected frequency. So our third step is to uh, find out all the expected frequency. So we're going to uh, evaluate the expected frequency and of course we're going to calculate the uh, statistical or the test statistics um, chi-square value or observe uh, chi-square value here. So these are the two activities we're going to complete before we can analyze and conclude. Right? Okay, just let me show you 
oh, what we have here. So I have already calculated the first one uh, here. So this is based on this uh, probability mass uh, density, uh, probability mass function. Uh, 1 minus p to a power x minus 1 multiplied by its uh, probability of success here. Right. <coughs> now just to show you the formula itself. Okay. Okay. Now you can see that that is actually here, uh, exactly the same as uh, stated in this uh, question here. All right. Now let me make it larger a bit so that we can see it uh, more clearly. Right. <coughs> so I hope that is clear. And then uh, from here, we can uh, tabulate uh, each one of these uh, individual probability. And then uh, there we have it. And then, uh, of course, uh, we, we should always check whether we are able to uh, obtain a 1. Yeah, a 1. Uh, don't forget, you must be able to obtain a 1 here. Okay, so you can see that I'm not getting... A one, so the main reason being because uh, the uh, probability of uh, um, getting one penalties before the a score is being achieved is here and so on and so forth. But the last one here, uh, we will need to uh, subtract off from all of this uh, probability because the total. Uh, because this is a probability density, this is a probability distribution. So therefore, the total must be equal to a 1. Uh, therefore, uh, the last one, we are supposed to take a 1 subtract off with all the sum of probability uh, over here. Okay, This one basically means that uh, the number of them is 9 or more. Uh, nine or more, right? So I, I should have written this down as a uh, number of attempts more uh, more than or equal to nine. Okay, so therefore the total of the total probability must be equal to one. If it's not, then you have to do a bit of adjustment here. Right? <clears throat> and then uh, for its uh, expected frequency, as I mentioned, expected frequency is um, just to recap the expected frequency is given by, in this case, is given by n uh, multiplied with its uh, probability mass function. Okay, so the n is the sample size, so multiply with its individual probability that we have already uh, determined here. So multiply by 100, uh, you will get this, and so on so forth, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, now, uh, of course, you would like to check whether it actually uh, tablet to or tally to 100. Of course, you should tally to 100 uh, just for checking purpose. Now, in the exam, uh, are we supposed to construct the table? Yes, you will have to construct the table as shown here. Right? I'm just using the worksheet to speed up the uh, discussion. Right? Okay, now the, the, the fourth step steps as i mentioned all this while the four steps is very very uh, critical you want to check for uh, check for this anything that is less than five uh, are there any expected frequency that is less than five so let's check now we found that yes uh, there are few here so we have one two uh, we have two that is less than five so uh, therefore, one way to actually fix this, you can actually combine uh, these two rows together. You can combine these two rows together. And then uh, lastly, to fix this one here, we can combine uh, these two together uh, so that we can get more than five there. All right, now I hope uh, step number four is clear. I'm going to show you after fixing that, uh, rectifying the expected frequency that is less than 5, we should be able to obtain uh, this one here. Yeah. Just let me check the number one more time. Okay. So you can see that uh, here, these two add up together is 
98. And then at the same time, you have to add up the observed frequency, don't forget, which is a 2. So, uh, is it a 2 or 5? <clears throat> One, two, three. Did I add up the correct one? Hold on. Okay. Six point nine four. Six point nine four. This is for seven uh, eight nine. Oh, okay. So I'm adding seven eight nine here. Seven eight nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you can see that I can actually add up uh, 8 and 9. Alright, now this is um, uh, one minor um, detail we need to pay attention to as compared to all the previous ones that we have uh, done so far. You can see that we managed to get the expected frequency uh, to be uh, more than 5 by adding these two. Yeah, we are. Uh, we are okay with this, right? <clears throat> and then, um, of course, this is one way to do it. You can actually add these two up. Or in this case, uh, we should also make sure that, okay, if I were to add these two up, I would be uh, getting my observed frequency to be a uh, 2. You can see that a 2, right? <clears throat> so therefore, in order to... Um, <clears throat> Uh, sort of uh, get a better uh, better calculation I would say uh, maybe it's best we can combine uh, three of these rows together okay so if we combine these three rows together we will be able to obtain observed frequency more than uh, five there uh, is it not wrong uh, is it not wrong uh, to use eight and nine no, it's not wrong to use eight and nine. If you prefer to use eight and nine, you can use that <coughs> because uh, the main requirement, uh, the main requirement uh, in the exam is the expected frequency must be more than five. But uh, to make the requirement um, uh, more strict, in this case, you want to make sure the observed frequency, which is also uh, equal to 5 or more than 5, yeah, you can actually combine 7 and 9 here, which uh, I have done so here, 7 and 9, so therefore you get a 5 here, okay, that would be a better um, calculation, all right, <clears throat> okay, now since I combine uh, 7 and 9 here, okay, uh, we have one value left here, which uh, we need to improve on, so that we can achieve expected frequency more than 5, so therefore we're going to combine 5 and 6 together. So if you combine 5 and 6 together, <coughs> so this is the one that we have. Alright, now I hope that is uh, clear at this point. Okay, All right. now there you have it. And then from here, uh, from here itself, we can uh, calculate the uh, all these values here. And then uh, finally, of course, we have to calculate each individual chi-square value. And then we will be able to uh, get the sum of the uh, test statistics uh, chi-square value. So this is our test statistics chi-square value. Uh, this one here is our observed chi-square value or test statistics chi-square value, 12 point. Okay, so once we have done that, uh, we verify that our uh, test test 6 chi-square or observed chi-square is equal to 12.5. Here, I just draw the number uh, for ease of comparison. All right, there you have it. Uh, we'll go through the uh, the most challenging uh, step, step number uh, 4 here. Checking whether the expected frequency is more than 5. Uh, now, in this case, in order, I just want to reiterate this part again. So, if you want to make your calculations um, um, much more accurate and easier to calculate, you can combine more than two rows together, like what I did here. I just uh, sh try to show you a different approach as compared to uh, all the examples that we have done so far. Right? <clears throat> so, you can actually combine three rows together. 
So we have found our test statistics uh, chi-square. Now, uh, all we need to do is compare or obtain our critical uh, chi-square value. All right. Now, we know that the significant level for our test is 5%. Uh, the only thing left now is step number 5. We have to determine the degree of freedom. Okay, we have uh, now go back to our final table here. We have uh, one category, two, three, four, five, six, six categories here. And then uh, we have estimated our parameter P here. So we need to uh, remove that. And then uh, finally, we have the uh, the sum. The sum must be is uh, one of the restriction. So therefore, one. Therefore, our degree of freedom is equal to four. Uh, alpha is equal to five percent. Uh, now we are ready to determine its uh, critical chi-square value. So at five percent, uh, at five percent, this rejection region is five uh, percent. So therefore, we have to look under the table for ninety-five percent here. Degree of uh, freedom to be four. Uh, if you look that through, uh, there you go. That is our critical uh, chi-square value. So therefore, from here we found that the critical chi-square value is actually nine point four nine. Okay, nine point four nine. All right, so from here, um, it's quite obvious in this case. Uh, it's quite obvious in this case. All right now, the observed or the test statistics chi square is much more bigger than the critical. Uh, this value is much more uh, larger than this um, critical chi square. Uh, therefore, we can conclude that. Uh, we have sufficient evidence to reject the now hypothesis. Okay, I think I have the. Let me see whether I have the uh, graph with me. Ah, yes, I do have the graph with me. Okay, so from here you can see that our critical, our critical chi square is uh, here. Our critical chi square, which is nine point four nine, and then our observe or our test test six chi square is. Uh, somewhere here, two of something. Therefore, it's a four in the rejection region. Uh, our conclusion would be to reject H um, naught. By rejecting, you have to make the conclusion uh, based on or in this context. We will say that, uh, therefore, uh, geometric distribution is not a good fit to this uh, sample. All right. Now, I hope that is clear. I will move on to the next example shortly. All right, example number eight. Uh, this is a, a, a test for goodness of fit for normal distribution. Now, when an intelligence uh, test was standardized, scores on tests were distributed normally with mean 100 and standard deviation 15. Now, 20 years later, it is thought that the distribution of scores may have changed. Or may have changed. It's no longer having a mean of 100 and standard deviation of 15 here. Now, the intelligence scores of a random uh, sample of 40 people were measured and are given below. All right. uh, these are the sample collected. Uh, use this uh, data to test whether uh, the distribution is indeed uh, still normal. So we begin to check whether the distribution is still the same as uh, having a mean 100 and uh, standard deviations of uh, 15 here. Okay, now um, just for the um, sake of uh, checking here, we will be using, uh, you can use 5%. Okay, let's take uh, uh, for, for instance, we're going to use a significant level of 5% here, uh, just for reference. Okay, right. <clears throat> now uh, we are going to start off by writing our, our now hypothesis. We will say that um, a normal distributions, right, normal distributions, uh, normal distributions of uh, this with a mean of 100 and uh, 15 is a good fit. Okay, 
that's our null hypothesis, whereby our alternative will be our normal distribution is not a good fit. Okay, it's not a good fit, right? <clears throat> and then uh, there you have it. We have uh, stated our objective. Um, now we're going to uh, perform uh, the same uh, routine uh, again. Right? So for normal distribution, it has uh, two parameters, uh, 100 and uh, uh, standard uh, deviations of uh, 15 here okay so we're going to check uh, whether it is um, whether this distribution is still the same as before or has it changed right? <clears throat> so we're going to check on the sample the sample of data that we collected are here uh, now you can see that I have already put it uh, on onto the worksheet. Okay. Now based on this, uh, the original one that is unsorted, or of course in the exam, preferable uh, you can sort it up. Uh, you can sort it up uh, manually. Of course, uh, it sounds ridiculous to sort it uh, manually. Uh, but if you have a piece of software like uh, not related to the exam, you can sort it quite easily. So here I have already sorted it. Uh, the main purpose why I want to sort it is because um, in this case, now I wanted to uh, form a table. I wanted to form a table uh, to create a frequency uh, table to represent all this uh, data that represent your IQ intelligence score here right. <clears throat> okay so that is the uh, uh, main purpose here uh, of course uh, some of you may have another suggestion saying that uh, if the if I don't want to create a frequency table can I just use the raw uh, IQ numbers and then uh, tabulate its mean and tabulate uh, its um, standard deviations. Uh, yeah, you can actually do that, right? But I, I did not uh, perform that here. So maybe some of you who like to test it out and uh, make a comparison, you can do so. Uh, for this uh, tutorial, I'm just uh, going to create a frequency table. Uh, for your case, you can try out to obtain the individual frequency. Uh, uh, the mean you can calculate the uh, the mean from the raw data itself without creating frequency table okay so the reason why I want to sort it because I want to create a frequency table right. now all I need to do is uh, determine the range so the range that I have obtained uh, usually the proper way to construct a frequency table is to obtain uh, the range just like what you did in your statistics. So the range is just the largest value uh, subtract off with the smallest value here. So I think you here you will get a 45. Yeah, you get 45 here. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and then the typical requirement for frequency table is um, you must have uh, minimum, I would say, six rows. Uh, six rows and above. So you should have six rows and uh, above right so therefore um, you want to know what is the interval for each row so the interval for each row will be 45 divided by 6 here for instance yeah so therefore uh, you will get a 9 uh, you get a 9. So therefore, it means that the interval for each row is uh, a 9. The interval for each row is a 9. Right? <clears throat> and then uh, the way you want to start uh, your numbers is purely up to you. All right? Here, I'm just uh, going to show you one example as to how we can lay out the table. Uh, this frequency, frequency table was based on uh, the guideline from the textbook. 
right so personally i would say that you can have uh your own uh your own style of uh, frequency table you don't really have to um have to use the same um frequency interval uh the iq interval that, that is used by the textbook here now you can see that uh, according to the textbook okay now the interval the starting number and the ending number that they use is uh, from here so they say that I iq number from anything uh, range from 0 until 86.5 86.5 and then the next one will start from 86.5 uh, to 95.5 so the gap between this or the class width or the class interval in this case it is having a size of uh, 9 so there you go the 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 interval size or the class size is determined from here so having a nine now the starting number if you look at the uh, data that we have just now uh, the smallest is 82 uh, you may want to start from 82 to 90 for instance is it okay yes of course it's okay uh, 80 to uh, 82 to 92 yeah having a class uh, width of a nine but uh, because because uh, we are testing for normal distribution normal distributions um, is used to model any continuous uh, data so in order to make sure this is continuous data uh, there must not be any gaps from one row to the next row so that's the reason why we keep it as 86.5 then the next one must start from 86.5 there's no gaps in between because the sets of data here uh, is assumed to be normally distributed so therefore we have to uh, make sure that all these are continuous data even though most of the time your IQ score uh, generally is a whole number or integer number right <clears throat> okay and then uh, the frequency itself you can count for any IQ score up to 86.5 how many are they okay now just let me show it to you uh, briefly so up to 86.5 up to 86.5 uh, that is around here so you only have two uh, frequency uh, only have two frequency there you go so you have to calculate that manually each one of this the total must be 40 because we have uh, 40 people involved in this survey all right okay i hope that is clear uh, once we have uh, done that okay once we have done that uh, now as usual okay the second step uh, first step we have done uh, this is uh, the second step now so the second step we have to determine the expected frequency as I mentioned before, we have to determine the expected frequency and then thereafter, we are going to determine the uh, test statistics uh, chi-square value. Now, expected frequency is uh, calculated all right, uh, based on each individual probability. All right. Now, the probability that we are supposed to use here will be uh, related to normal uh, distribution so the, for the first row how do we actually calculate this uh, probability okay now just let me show it to you okay so this probability is uh, calculated uh, based on this so for the first row uh, first one here I'm going to show it to you how we actually calculate that that is a probability of uh, X less than 86.5 we are trying to calculate the uh, probability of iq score uh, less than 86.5 and then by using normal distribution uh, by using normal distribution okay now the proper way we perform a normal distribution should be if you don't have uh, uh, of course uh, some of your calculator is quite advanced you can actually tune into the uh, normal distribution distribution mode and then uh, tablet this value if you don't have uh, all you need to do is go through the usual um, manual procedure by converting this into the z score that will be 86.5 uh, 
subtract off with 100 divided by uh, 15 there okay so let me see what do I have here if I do that uh, calculation so that will be a 6.5 minus 100 divided by 15 there okay so I end up with a negative 0 0.9 so now therefore that is probability of z score less than negative 0. Point, uh, less than negative 0. 0.9 there okay and then next uh, because I don't have an advanced calculator so therefore I will need to rely on my uh, data booklet and then we are looking at a normal distributions table so I need to go back to a normal distributions table not the T uh, this is a normal distribution table for any uh, Z that is less than negative 0 0.9 so less than negative 0 0.9 is actually some way here okay I'm interested to figure out this probability which is exactly the same as this exactly because they are symmetrical so this area must be the same as this area if I'm able to find this area then I should be able to uh, find this area All right now because of the setup of the data booklet uh, now all I need to do is uh, figure out this area instead uh, this area instead right okay so because this is uh, 0 0.9 all I need to do is uh, look under the table here uh, for the value 0 0.9 okay let me see whether I have 0 0.9 here okay let me erase all this 0 0.9 and then there you have it you can see that uh, 0 0.9 is over here okay this is 0 0.9 okay I have 0 0.9 uh, now the z-score of 0 0.9 and then this z-score uh, stat that is 0 0.8159 uh, which means this area is uh, this area is 85 81.59% so 81.59% this area represents 81.59% but I'm interested to find out this area instead this area like how big is this okay so therefore it's quite uh, it's quite uh, direct so all you need to do is just take 100% uh, with that so that will be like 18.41% uh, or 0 0.1841 okay so you can see that that's how I get 0 0.1841 here by using uh, data booklet right? <clears throat> if you have your uh, advanced calculator by all means you can use it to check all right now I hope that's clear <clears throat> so after this after you're done with this uh, all you need to do is continue right continue to tabulate the rest you can continue to tablet uh, all of this okay just let me see uh, tablet all of this and then uh, you will get each individual probability and then from here we can calculate the expected uh, frequency so the expected frequency is given by the sample size which is 40 multiplied by each uh, individual probability so like this uh, we have to multiply by uh, 40 here in order for us to get this right. <clears throat> okay now we have done uh, with step uh, 2 and 3 2 and 3 actually I right. uh, hope that's clear now of course uh, the next step as, as usual step number uh, 3 and 4 which is very important we need to check whether any expected frequency uh, that would be less than 5 yeah uh, indeed there are two these two are less than five so we are going to join uh, these two together <coughs> okay so after joining you should have something like this let me show it to you okay so after joining these two uh, we will have uh, here okay 
So if you join that, uh, don't forget the IQ score, the intervals, will, we will have to change that okay, to, to something like this. And then the observed frequency will be uh, 12 now. The expected frequency, we have uh, combined that to be 7.362 now. And then we can proceed on to calculate its uh, individual chi-square. And then the sum of all these individual chi-square will give us the test uh, statistics chi-square. So we have obtained our test uh, statistics chi-square, which is 8.652. Uh, okay, now we have go through the, uh, the hurdle here. Uh, next, next, we are going to uh, determine the critical chi-square value. For the critical chi-square value, uh, now we will need to uh, calculate its uh, degree of freedom. Okay. Now the degree of freedom here is uh, quite direct. Okay. Now uh, it's uh, not very tough to uh, work out the degree of freedom here. So the degree of freedom I'm going to write down somewhere here. So the degree of freedom is how many categories we have. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we have five categories. And then uh, there is no estimated uh, parameters here. Uh, but we do have a restriction on the sum. So therefore, the degree of freedom is equal to four now, for uh, practice purposes, we assume that we are using a 5% significant level. Now, therefore, we're going to go back to our data booklet one more time. Okay, uh, under chi-square. So, let's look at uh, chi-square distributions here. Uh, degree of freedom of 4, uh, degree of freedom of 4 here. Okay, degree of freedom of 4. And then um, looking under the column of 95 because our significant level is 5%. Uh, 95% here. Uh, degree of freedom equal to 4. Uh, therefore, we have already uh, found our critical, uh, our critical chi-square. So therefore, I'm going to write down here. Our critical chi-square is given by 9.49 uh, here. Now, since our test statistics chi-square is less than the critical chi-square, so therefore uh, we we uh, we will accept we will accept um, our null hypothesis, and then uh, since we accept our null hypothesis, we will say that the normal distributions uh, with that parameters of mean 100 and standard deviation of 15 is an appropriate distribution to represent this uh, sample. Okay, now I hope that is uh, clear here. Let me see whether I have the graph. Is uh, okay. Hold on. Forgot whether I have a graph. Okay, I don't have the graph there. So here I just uh, complete this discussion up to this point. Uh, you can always draw the graph and then um, check that the um, the test statistics uh, chi square is less than the critical chi square. So therefore. Uh, we will accept our uh, null hypothesis, or we don't have sufficient evidence to to reject the null hypothesis. Right? Okay. So I hope that is clear. We're gonna look at the next one. All right. Example number nine. All right. You can see that the question is getting longer and longer. Okay. All right. Now we are still on um, uh, testing. The goodness of fit for normal distributions. Uh, this question looks very similar to example number eight, uh, but of course there is a slight difference there. We're going to check this out. An experiment is conducted to determine whether people's uh, estimates of one minute have a mean duration of one minute. Now data is to be collected by asking a sample of uh, people to say start and stop at times their estimate to be one minute apart. Now the actual time apart in second is recorded by the experimenter. Now a t-test is to be conducted. A t-test is to be conducted. 
uh, of the hypothesis that the mean actual time apart is uh, 60 seconds. Uh, 60 seconds. Right? Now, before this is done, a preliminary sample is taken. So uh, the sample has been taken here. Now, we have to use this uh, data to uh, decide uh, whether the assumption of the normality is reasonable. Now, of course, uh, the same thing. Uh, we are going to write down our now hypothesis and our hypothesis, uh, uh, our alternative hypothesis. Right? All right. Now, as I uh, stated just now, we have to write our now hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. So let's see how does it look like. So our now hypothesis would be um, whether the assumption of normality is reasonable. So we can say that uh, our estimate, because we are estimating. Uh, estimate uh, estimate of estimate uh, would follow follow uh, normal distribution for instance uh, or the estimate is um, let me see uh, use this data to decide whether the assumption uh, of normality is reasonable so we, we, we can we can say that the uh, estimate uh, with normality is reasonable. Uh, estimate is uh, normally this tree. Uh, estimate uh, can be assumed, uh, can be assumed to be normally distributed, right? And then uh, the same thing go for uh, this one here. The alternative will say that the estimate. Um, estimate is not uh, normally distributed. Right. So that's it. That's our objective. Okay. Now, once we are, are clear with this, okay. Uh, once we are clear with this, um, then. We are going to move on to the second step. All right. Now the second step, uh, we have done the first uh, objective. Okay, we have done the first objective. So the second step will be uh, because these are all uh, the time taken, recorded, and then time is a continuous uh, sets of uh, data. As usual, we need to build our frequency table there. Now you can see that from here, the data has been sorted. The original data was here. I have already sorted it uh, beforehand. And then we're going to check the difference. We're going to determine the uh, the range itself. So the range is 63 minus of, uh, 29, which is 34. There. And then uh, therefore, you can determine the uh, class interval uh, size or class size in this case uh, because our minimum requirement for number of rows in the table is 6 you divide this by uh, 6 um, now that would be I would say that it would be between 4 and 5 uh, right 4 and 5 so you can take the smaller one or the bigger one doesn't matter here right? now for this example I'm using <coughs> uh, I'm using a 4 Right. So if you are using a five, uh, that is fine. Okay. So I'm using a class width of uh, four unit. And then how you want to start uh, your uh, f f the uh, interval itself is up to you. Right. So take for instance the one that I have here looks something like this. Okay. So uh, based on the uh, textbook, this is again this is a textbook uh, guideline. Uh, you don't have to purposely follow exactly the same like this. Okay. Uh, now you can actually start from because just now, if you refer to this, the smallest one is 29. Right. So you can say that from 29 to uh, 34, uh, you can also do that. Right. Or uh, you can start from 41.5 here. Right. 
So then the next one is if you end at 41.5, and the next one will be 41.5 to 45.5 since uh, I'm using a class size of uh, 4 here. If you are using a class size of 5, by all means, you can go ahead. Um, both your result and my result using a different frequency table uh, should be approximately the same. right? Uh, you can test it out. Okay, the observed frequency we can calculate that from the these sets of uh, data. Okay, I'll make sure it tell you to sixty uh, because uh, we have sixty sets of data here. Okay, and then uh, calculations of probability. All right. Calculations of uh, probability uh, again is the same uh, for for the first one. I'll show you one more time. Uh, now in this case. Uh, we will we will calculate based on normal distributions uh, one more time. Right now, before we can do this, okay, before we can do this, uh, there are a few things that is uh, missing uh, from our uh, sample as compared to our previous example. Our previous example uh, has already given us both the mean and the standard deviations for this normal distribution, but for this example. Uh, the mean and the standard deviations are not given. So therefore, uh, you have to uh, produce uh, an estimate. We have to use an estimate for the mean and the standard deviations. Uh, we have to get the estimate for the mean uh, and the uh, standard deviations itself. Okay. So uh, there are many ways to do this. Okay. Uh, now, of course, uh, uh, one one way you can do that is just uh, sum this up, and then uh, divide by um, what do you have here? Divide by sixty, there. and then you should be able to get the mean. All right. <clears throat> okay. So therefore, let me see whether I calculated my mean and so. On. Oh no, I didn't calculate my mean. Did I calculate my mean or not? Ah uh, no. Okay, hold on. Just let. Right now, since I have not calculated the mean, I'm going to show you how uh, the mean is uh, calculated here. Okay. Now, first of all, uh, we can actually uh, sum up all these numbers and then divide by uh, total number of uh, sample we have uh, to obtain the mean. Right. Okay. Now, first of all, let me clean this up. Okay, so the mean, the mean is given by, I'm going to write it down here, so the mean is given by, okay, so that will be uh, the sum, the sum of all these numbers here, okay, and then uh, divided by, um, I know that uh, there are totals of uh, 60, you know what I'm <coughs> Is it 60? Let me check. Yeah, correct. All right. So there are 60 sets of uh, data. So therefore, the mean, uh, estimated mean is 51.1. Um, so I'm going to write that down. Uh, estimate. So these are all estimate. Uh, the mean estimated is 51.1. And then uh, don't forget, for normal distributions, any normal distribution, uh, we must have uh, the mean and the standard deviation. So we need to estimate these two. So the estimate for this is x bar. The estimate for this is s squared. So the sample uh, variance. The mean is calculated uh, using this formula. I hope that uh, you guys still remember this. Okay. And then uh, the uh, Sample standard deviation is calculated using this formula here. Uh, now that depends on how you like to uh, do it. There are two formulas you can use here. It's either you use this formula, which is the the original one, okay, or uh, you can use the other formula here. That would be um, square divided by n over n minus 1. 
right? So either one of these formula will give you the sample standard deviation, right? Okay, I hope that is clear. I'm going to erase this, and then I'm going to use my uh, software to help me to calculate the uh, standard deviations here. So, so S uh, STD uh, standard deviation. No, that would be. Do I have a uh, sample standard deviation? So I have to use the my sample standard deviation. All right, now for all these sets of data. Okay, now that will yield seven point uh, five six. Okay. Uh, this is the standard deviation. I think I've uh, written that down wrongly. It's supposed to be here. Right. So that's the standard deviation, uh, not the variance itself. Right. I hope that is clear. I'm going to rewrite the formula for uh, sample. Uh, this is sample variance, sorry. Sample variance. Uh, N minus 1. Unbiased sample variance. Right. Okay, now I hope that is clear. A uh, lots of works to do here. So you can see that we have to estimate. There are two estimates uh, to the parameters here. So we have to exclude, we have to subtract these two estimates uh, from the calculations of the degree of freedom letter. Okay, now I hope that is clear. Uh, once we have uh, calculated this, yes. Now we are ready to determine the expected frequency. Yeah, just let me show it to you here. Uh, we will be able to deduce the expected frequency. Uh, before that, we have to calculate uh, the probability for each one of these uh, using the same uh, method that uh, we uh, have used just now. Right. So take for instance, if I wish to uh, calculate uh, this probability, for instance, so that will be uh, probability of x less than 41.5, and then uh, you will have to convert that to z score 41.5 minus of with the mean that we have estimated just now divided by the standard deviation 7.56. Okay, and then from here, if you refer to the uh, data. Uh, booklet, you should be able to um, get 0 0.1022 here. Okay, now I hope that is uh, clear. Uh, I will not show you how to actually determine the z-score anymore. Uh, you can look at the previous sections and then uh, check on your own. Uh, this is the probability for any x uh, that is less than 41.5 here. And then therefore, uh, we can deduce the expected frequency by multiplying uh, with the uh, total number of uh, sample size, which is 60. Okay. <clears throat> and then finally, we can calculate the uh, chi-square value or the um, test statistics chi-square chi value. So in this case, we found that it is 17.1. Uh, uh, this is our observe or our test statistics chi square value 17.1. Okay, so right here I'm going to write that down. Our test statistics chi square is 17.1. Okay, we are almost there. Okay, so from here, our last step is pretty much the same like before. We have to refer to our uh, critical. Uh, critical chi-square value. Now, to make uh, things uh, easier for us, we will be using 5% uh, significant level. And then next, we have to determine the uh, degree of freedom. Uh, we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 6 categories here. Okay. Now, uh, not forgetting, you should always check uh, as I mentioned before, you should always check whether the uh, expected frequencies um, have uh, any value that is less than 5. All right? In this case, uh, we don't have any value less than 5, so it's fine. Um, so we don't need to modify the structure of table. All we need to do is check how many rows we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
So we have six row, uh, six category. We have estimated two parameters. And then finally, uh, we have one restriction of the sum. Therefore, uh, our degree of freedom is a three here. Okay, I hope that is clear. And then uh, lastly, we will have to refer to our data booklet. Okay, now 5% significant level. We are going to look for 95 column and the degree of freedom of a tree here. And then that will yield a critical chi square of 7.815. Okay, so therefore the critical chi square is 7.82. Uh, so from here it is quite uh, obvious that the uh, test statistics chi square is greater than that. So we can conclude that uh, we have uh, sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, all right, uh, with this uh, critical chi-square value and the uh, test statistical chi-square value, I'm going to highlight that, this and this. Uh, now, we know that uh, the test statistics chi-square is far greater than the, its uh, critical chi-square. Uh, therefore, we have sufficient evidence to reject our null hypothesis. And then we can conclude that the estimates uh, that we have performed from this sample is not normally distributed. Now, I hope uh, that is clear for example 9. Alright, example number 10. Okay, All right. this is a, a chi-square test uh, to check goodness of fit uh, for the uh, exponential distribution. Right. Let's uh, read that through. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, it is suggested that the time intervals between arrivals of passengers at the bus stop can be modeled by an exponential distribution. Okay, provided that buses appear sufficiently frequent, uh, frequently and unpredictably for passengers simply to turn up independently at random. Right? <clears throat> now, the time intervals between 36 successive Arrivals at the bus stop were measured and are recorded below. And I used the data to investigate uh, the suggestion. <coughs> so the suggestion as to whether this uh, sample can be modeled uh, by an exponential distribution. Okay, so now the exponential, a bit information on uh, exponential distribution. Uh, exponential distribution usually used to model um, the time durations uh, before uh, certain events occur. It looks very similar to geometric distribution. Uh, geometric distribution uh, is used to model a discrete event where a certain failure occurs first before success has been achieved. Now, exponential is for continuous uh, event. Right? <coughs> okay. Now, uh, as usual, to investigate this uh, uh, suggestion, we're going to uh, rely on 5% significant level here. We're going to start off by writing our null hypothesis. Okay. Uh, we will say that uh, this time arrival, time arrival, I make it short here. Uh, time arrivals uh, can be modeled. Can be modded, yeah, correct. So can be modded uh, by by an exponential distribution, <clears throat> whereby the alternative hypothesis will be uh, otherwise. So time arrival. Um, cannot be molded by 
and exponential distribution. All right, so that is the uh, objective. Okay, so we have done that. <clears throat> now, next uh, next step, a bit information about uh, exponential uh, distribution. So in this case, if x represents the time arrivals between um, uh, the time intervals between arrivals of passengers, therefore we can write that this is uh, exponential distributions uh, with uh, parameter uh, lambda. Uh, lambda will be the uh, average value uh, over a certain period of time. Okay, so uh, in this case, the lambda, the uh, mean value is not given. The mean value um, over a certain period of time is not given. So we have to estimate this. Okay, and then uh, for exponential uh, distributions, the mean, the mean is actually given by one over lambda. So we can estimate the lambda or the uh, average value over certain period of time lambda using uh, ex and then ex can be calculated or can be estimated from this sample data by using uh, this formula here that is the uh, mean is uh, divided by uh, divided by 36 in this case n which is 36 right now i hope this is clear now, I have already tabulated this in my spreadsheet, so it's easier for analysis. Now, you can see that uh, we can sum up all these numbers, of course. Okay, so you sum up all these numbers, and then the mean is given by uh, 33 point. Okay, so the mean is actually 33.58. So from here, we know that 33.58 is actually equal to 1 over lambda. Uh, therefore, lambda can be estimated from here. It's the reciprocal of 33.58. Uh, now, based on the calculations, we should use 0 0.0298. Okay, now we are almost there. <coughs> now, uh, as usual, the next step will be uh, we will have to calculate the expected frequency. In order to calculate expected frequency, we need the probability. Uh, related to exponential distribution. So the, for exponential distributions, the formula to calculate the uh, probability is given by here. Okay, where the lambda has been estimated to be this. So we're going to use this formula to calculate each uh, individual. <coughs> okay, so here it is. Uh, now, of course, uh, you can put this into a, a time interval right? uh, as such. So this, this is something like a time interval right? <coughs> uh, from 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29 and so on. Uh, now, the same methods apply here. You can sort this up and then uh, Minimum requirement is uh, six rows, or you can have uh, more in this case. All right. One example how we can uh, put this into a frequency table would look something like this. Uh, for instance, 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29. Um, <coughs> each one of them have a time interval of uh, uh, 10. Okay, if you convert them to the uh, class boundary. Okay. So this is just a suggested time interval that you can use. Okay, <clears throat> and then uh, you're going to determine the uh, the observed frequency, the observed frequency based on the time interval uh, that they have set for us, for instance. Okay, and then uh, next we can uh, determine its uh, individual probability by using this formula here. Uh, Okay, so from here, we will be able to calculate its uh, individual uh, probability. All right. Okay, so I hope uh, that is 
uh, clear here now the you are wondering what is the x value that we are uh, referring uh, to here okay so just uh, let me show it to you we have um, okay this is uh, up to you can see that the class boundary is actually up to 9.5 so the lower boundary here is actually negative 0 0.5 mathematically I don't mean physically this uh, this actually exists now mathematically it ranged from negative 0 0.5 to 9.5 here uh, this part will be 9.5 to 19.5 okay so all you need to do is uh, calculate the probability from from uh, actually it's from 0 until 9.5 until 9.5 all right so we can uh, tabulate this until 9.5 right. or we can use the um, uh, the sum uh, the sum of um, uh, all the area under this uh, uh, curve right because this is a continuous uh, probability distributions okay uh, therefore in order to calculate the probability here you can take the integration <coughs> do I need to take the integration let me see here uh, the function oh yeah yeah correct hold on just let me make a bit of correction here uh, this is not the probability I think I wrote it down wrongly hold on um, let me correct this the probability density function sorry I think I refer to probability density functions for uh, exponential distribution is given as uh, fx equal to lambda e negative lambda x okay this is the uh, probability density functions where the lambda is greater than zero now in order to calculate this probability for instance uh, we will have to take the um, uh, integration so therefore for this we are trying to find probability of any x that is less than 9.5 okay anything that is less than 9.5 uh, that basically means uh, the integrations of uh, with respect to x now from of course uh, this is the the x the lowest is actually uh, from 0 until uh, 9.5 uh, until 9.5 right but if you want to put the negative 0 0.5 uh, by all means you can uh, give it a try right but uh, because time always start from 0 here now that would actually you 0 0.2464 uh, here <clears throat> so I hope that's clear right that's how we calculate the probability and then from there uh, we should be able to deduce the expected frequency so the expected frequency is calculated based on uh, n multiplied by its uh, probability so the n in this case is uh, 36 so you just need to take 36 multiply with this uh, we will get 8.8 uh, .8. okay so I hope that is clear all right so I'm going to pause here for a while you can actually take out your calculator and then uh, uh, tablet the probability using your calculator uh, you don't have to do uh, manual uh, calculations using the integration I think your calculator can actually perform uh, that integration uh, quite easily okay uh, there you go All right <clears throat> so I'm going to erase off this okay now that is how we obtain uh, all the expected frequency now again don't forget uh, at this point of time you have to check if there is any of the expected frequency that is less than 5 now we found that yes there are a lot so therefore one way to rectify this situation is we are going to combine uh, three of these <coughs> yeah some of you may suggest that can I just combine these two yeah of course if you combine these two it's already greater than uh, 5 uh, but you will notice that the observed uh, frequency is still under 5 there so it's better to combine 3 rows here 
uh, so that the observed uh, frequency also greater than 5 at the same time the expected frequency also greater than 5 here and then from here we can join these two rows together uh, we notice that this is already greater than 5 and the observed frequency also greater than uh, 5 there. now after making modification this is how the result look like <coughs> okay so after combining the uh, observed frequency you can see that we are combining this uh, 4 plus 3 plus 1 which is 8 and then uh, 18 then again your time interval you will have to change it from 30 to 49 then uh, 30 49 50 and above yeah. okay so i hope that is clear at this point uh, then we will have all the uh, uh, correct calculations or expected frequency now. Then we can go through the calculations of the uh, chi-square and then finally we are able to deduce that the um, test statistics chi-square is given by 5.55 here. So this is the test statistics chi-square, so 5.55, uh, which is a very nice number here. Okay. Okay, at this point of time, uh, it's quite um, easy to finish off the last part. Right? So the last part, uh, because we are using a five percent, all we need to do is deduce the uh, degree of uh, freedom here. Now the degree of freedom, we have to check how many category we have. One, two, three, four, five. We have five categories. Uh, we have estimated one. And then we have a restrictions on the total so, so therefore our degree of freedom is a tree there. Now by referring to the uh, data booklet, uh, degree of freedom of tree and then uh, at a 5% significant level, so we are supposed to look at this, uh, that would yield 7.815. Okay, so our critical uh, chi-square is 7.82 7.82 since the uh, test statistics uh, chi-square is less than the critical chi-square uh, therefore um, we have sufficient evidence to not not to reject okay not to, re to reject or to accept uh, in this case we're going to accept the null hypothesis uh, therefore our conclusion based on this context would be time arrivals uh, of passengers at the bus station or bus stop sorry um, can be modeled by an exponential distribution all right so i hope that is clear at this point